Hi, this is Yoho Sopil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Brent Schroeder, Global CTO at Suza. Brent, it's great to have you back on the show after a long time. Yeah, it's great to be back and great to talk to you again. A lot has changed. Pandemic happened and of course the market is changing. A lot of companies are looking at cost cutting or the way we look at it become more cost efficient, which also means the whole, you know, once again, the ecosystem is changing. If I ask you, if you look at all these macro, micro and major trends, uh, changes that are happening in the industry, what are you seeing is happening when it comes to uh, cloud native adoption, digital transformation? Companies are definitely trying to accelerate their transformation as much as possible. And cloud native is a, a root of that. Um, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I see in, in talking with companies. And while, you know, there may be some macroeconomic headwinds, uh, companies still need to invest to innovate um, because they recognize the competitive environment and that they're in and that they need to respond to it and continue moving. Um, so it's great to see the investments that are going in, uh, in the innovation in cloud native, uh, AI and ML and edge. Uh, you know, it's just an exciting time of everything going on. I mean, we look at cloud native, that things have matured. Everybody is talking about the next thing, Kubernetes, but there are still a lot of companies who still are in a very early stage of their digital transformation. Suza has been around for a long time. You folks kind of, you know, set the whole open source, you know, ecosystem there. Uh, banks are there, like, which are like 100 years old, right? So do you still see there are companies which are in the very early phase of their digital transformation cloud native journey still? And if yes, what are some of the major challenges they face? Yeah, no, I think it's, I think there's still many companies that are very early and and even some that, that let's say, are at the, such at the beginning that, um, you know, they still haven't rolled out any material production uh, solutions in the in the cloud native space, and I think the the <clears throat> inhibitor for many of the companies falls into two camps. Uh, one is just the operational expertise, right? Is is they're traditionally used to and and well versed in uh, the virtual machine world and and all the infrastructure that is involved there. And with, you know, it's one of those of, of, you know, when your hair's on fire, you focus on what you gotta do. do. Uh, and having the time and bandwidth to do that transition is, is still a, an inhibitor to some. Uh, because they need the applications to go as well. Which leads to the second aspect is, you know, it's, it's really a new development world uh, for companies to move into cloud native, to develop in a microservices architecture, uh, to adopt, uh, that development methodology, uh, both architecturally and the CI/CD or DevOps delivery models and, and operational models, I think those are some of the barriers um, that are in place, and I think that really sets up the trends, you know, that we're seeing is, um, and that we as an industry need to continue to do is how do we make it easier, uh, faster to adopt the technology. Uh, to minimize the new skill sets, leverage the existing skill sets um, that uh, companies have uh, so that they can put them to use in a, in a much quicker manner. Excellent. Once again, since you brought the point of a skill set, uh, we are also seeing you know, a kind of uh, not disturbing, and I think what happened during pandemic, companies were over hiring. They just you know wanted more talent because uh, there was always a talent shortage in the market. We, Cover you know a lot of reports through Linux Foundation and all those things. and now a layoff is happening. Seven percent seems to be a magic number there, which means that you know there are a lot of developers in the market. But as you also said that I mean this 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 gap is not going to go away anytime soon. That you know you have to kind of also internally uh, enhance those uh, skill sets. Uh, once again, what kind of challenges organizations are facing when it comes to having these developer skill sets? Because we are also looking at a lot of cultural organizational changes. We talk about platform engineering, we talk about DevOps, we talk about SREs, rules are changing. Whether I don't know if the actual role is changing or just the labels are changing. So if we just ask you to look at it from the culture of people's perspective, uh, what are companies doing and what they can do to address this skill set challenge? Yeah, you know, you mentioned some of the, the turnover in the, in the industry, and I think it's, you know, companies trying to address that skill set challenge is, is, you know, aligning the business needs 
um, with the resources that they have and, and making sure that they've got the investments in the right places. Uh, you're talking about, you know, are they change, is the world changing or is the roles changing or is the, we just changing the names? Uh, I think the role is changing uh, because the technology and how you work has to change. You know, our, historically, much of the organizational architecture was, you know, functionally siloed. Um, and that has to fundamentally change to take advantage of the technologies, you know, having, you know, here's my compute team, here's my storage team, the network experts know there's a security team, you know, down the hall um, and they all work independently in silos does not work um, in the cloud native environment. You've got to bring in more of an integrated experience where they work in teams with all of the, the skill sets together. Uh, <clears throat> to deliver that. Uh, and that's the biggest thing that we see. Uh, you know, and you mentioned one of the terms, and this is one that, you know, is, is big in my mind. And I, I see this, you know, every day when I'm talking to customers is this notion of platform engineering. Uh, and I see platform engineering and it's a very maybe generic term, uh, but how I see platform engineering in the companies that I'm talking to that are, that are adopting cloud native, it's about providing the set of services to the company, to the developers across the company and the operations teams across the company to provide them a, a consistent experience and actually abstract away some of the nuances of the underlying technologies. You know, if we are asking developers to go learn Kubernetes, um, in addition to understanding the applications that they're trying to develop and the business problems they're trying to solve, that just be, it's not in the interest of most of the developers. You know, when I travel around the industry and talk to developer groups, uh, they want to develop code. They want to solve problems. They don't want to understand um, pods and, and service meshes and, and such. It's, it's, you know, somebody else take care of that. And that's really the role of platform engineering is abstract that away, provide services, common services for the developers. Uh, and that's where the team, the platform engineering teams need to work together. I'm seeing them are, the successful ones are working together across compute, storage, network, and security um, to provide that set of services to um, the, their developer community. Now, when we are talking about, as you said, you know, the developers are, they don't want to, to talk, you know, get involved. Also, technologies are changing so fast. They don't want to just keep learning new things because there are a lot of things that they're good at, they want to continue to do. There's one more thing that is uh, evolving, and I, I remember talking to uh, Suze also back in the early days, who was also uh, AI ML there. We all talk about ChatGPT, a co-pilot is there. So can you also talk about that, how the uh, AI ML, all these uh, new technology can also kind of enable uh, platform engineering teams so as to take care of a lot of mundane jobs so they can still continue to focus on the challenges versus doing a lot of repeatable things. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, I, I do see you know, more of that coming into the operations space. And we even take advantage of the technology in some areas and are, are working on some of the next um, areas. You know, one of the, the areas that is really being, maybe two areas that it's really being applied to, um, observability, right? Kubernetes brings in a lot of power. Uh, but with that is a lot of complexity under the hood. Uh, and so to really scale and optimize on a continual basis as new services come online, as they need to scale up, scale down, et cetera, um, and you've got all these different services interacting, the only way to practically optimize that on a real-time basis is with AI. Um, so I think we're going to see this notion of AI ops, you know, really grow um, as, you know, the Kubernetes continues to expand um, and microservices continue to expand because you've, you've got to balance, you know, those services against available resources. Um, and, you know, the, both the operation side and then the, the uh, let's call it the, the reliability uh, side, keeping things running when there's an outage occurs, where, where's the root cause? Um, with complex interconnected systems, understanding where the problem originated is extremely complex. So again, an AI ML um, problem that 
that uh, the technology can really be brought to uh, to help address. Um, the second area I see AIML uh, helping significantly in the uh, area of operations um, is security. Uh, again, a very complex area. It's it's changing every day, right? It's it's not like you know I can go out and like the old days of let me just go download a, a vulnerabilities file and you know check my scan, you know, make sure my security scan's being done. Um, you know, that's not the way security works these days. You know, the actors are, the, the malicious actors um, out there, you know, have new approaches every day. Uh, and the patterns that they use are, are constantly changing. So to keep up with them and detect anomalous behavior is really the key um, that we see security uh, moving into. Uh, you know, some of the solutions that, that we're working on and, and building into our systems, you know, the behavioral learning, you know, what's normal, um, understanding that, and then being able to real time uh, catch anomalous behavior to help prevent uh, data loss or malicious activities um, that may be going on. You know, the, I think we're going to continue to see zero trust um, grow as, a, as the uh, preeminent way to, to protect data loss uh, and uh, you know AI and, and is definitely going to contribute to um, the growth of that. Now let's just like uh, put it all together, wrap it up and look at it from the, the lens of SUSE, uh, the, the challenges, the areas that we talked about. Uh, talk a bit about how is SUSE evolving uh, from the early days of a Linux uh, player to uh, providing a wide variety of solutions so that, you know, the challenges that we just talked about, uh, so that you can help your customers wherever they are in their journey. If I was to just kind of summarize some of our key focus areas, uh, one in this whole, dis what I now refer to as the distributed enterprise um, and the complexity of, of the platforms is, is how can we help build uh, a unified platform across that distributed enterprise at both the Linux layer um, which underlies, you know, both the infrastructure and the applications um, and the uh, Kubernetes or the cloud native layer, having a unified um, cloud native platform, you know, across that distributed enterprise. You know, a heavy focus on, on those two areas at the platform level, uh, working on simplification uh, for the developer and the operations, you know, the, the world is moving too fast and there's too much technology for everybody to to be knowledgeable about everything so how can we simplify adoption reduce risk in adopting new technologies you know we talked about you know there's still many companies that are to come on to the cloud native uh, experience uh, and i think much of that is about simplifying and reducing risk uh, in uh, technology adoption um, and then finally uh, what I would call kind of the supply chain to production security. Uh, you know, it, it's where are you getting your software from and can you trust that? Um, the developers and their building of it, you've got to have security shift left into the developer realm. It's DevSecOps. It's not, it can't be just DevOps any longer. Um, and then you've got to carry that through to the operation side, to the production side, um, and then implement zero trust controls. Um, on top of that. So if I was to kind of summarize the, the spectrum of, of SUSE's portfolio uh, investments and, and where we're going and, and trying to, uh, you know, really focus on the customer needs, um, that covers that, the spectrum of that. Brent, thank you so much for taking time out today. And uh, once again, talk about the larger trends and the role SUSE is playing today in this ecosystem. I really appreciate your insights. And I would love to have you back on the show again, but let's make sure that there'll be not a huge gap like this one. Yeah, Thank no, you. It's, and it's, it is such an exciting time in the industry and a lot of things to talk about. So look forward to our next discussion. Mm -hmm.